Okay guys, I'm back out here for another uh, video on the Gatton CNC build. Uh, in the last video, I showed you how to, uh, you know, put the uh, gantry together to keep it perpendicular with the table. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to put on the Z-axis front plate, the rear plate, how to connect them with the... Uh, the supports this is the lower support here and also the main thing is how to get this uh, acne nut to line up properly with this uh, stepper motor that goes here so that it's going to be concentric and it will make it move nice and smooth with no drag so it won't hang up and you lose steps so um, you know, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and apologize at the beginning of this video for this video being long because I know it's going to take a while. And just to try to save some time, I didn't bother shooting a video or talking about how to put these bearings on. All that is, you know, pretty self-explanatory in the drawings. I've got detailed drawings of how to, uh, you know, the steps where you got your bolt and a small washer and then a big washer and a bearing and another washer, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know that's that's pretty simple to follow so uh, one of the things I did want to talk about like I said you've gone to the trouble to get your uh, your gantry nice and perpendicular to the table well you want to make sure that when you put these uh, plates on that they are nice and perpendicular too and they should be if you use this, the correct number of washers. In other words, you've got, for example, on this front plate, um, there's four bearings that this, this rides on, two on top and two on the bottom. Well, as long as I've got them spaced out the same, and in my case, I have, uh, you know, I have against the bearing, I have two small washers and then I have one big washer. So as long as I have that same number, same type washer with the same thickness, you're going to have it spaced out the same, and then that way you're going to have a good, uh, you know, perpendicular to your table here, which is important because if you do this on the back as well and make sure you get it perpendicular, then you're going to have these two parallel, which means you're going to get a good fit when you apply these other parts. Now, if you look in the drawings, uh, that you have here in front of you probably. Uh, you'll notice that I've got these, uh, these are 7 and 21 and 30 seconds or 7.656 for the decimal guys. Uh, and they are made where they're probably going to be a little bit long. As I go to stick this on here, I can see, and I kind of already measured this uh, off camera, that I'm about 330 seconds or about 0.094 or 94 thousandths too long. Okay, and like I said, both of these are the same. When I check it down here, I kind of get the same thing. It's, it's about uh, 330 seconds too long. So, for this particular piece, it's just a support up under here, so it doesn't really make any difference which end I cut it off of, as long as I get it where it just fits in there and will screw in and hold those two plates together. But this one's a little different. You want to make sure you try to keep this one in the center of where your stepper mode is going to set. So just by using the eyeball, and of course I will put on my glasses to help a little bit, but if I just hold the back of this plate, uh, or hold this flush to the back of the plate here, and bring this up to that hole where the stepper motor goes, I can tell just by looking that it looks like that hole in the acne nut here is in the center of that hole for the stepper mode. Now when I say it's in the center I mean it's in the center this way not necessarily this way. So that looks pretty good but when I bring this plate up and do the same thing oops, pull it too far. There we go. push you know, hold this plate flush, I mean it's off so much that I can tell that, it's, that, that the Acme nut is too far that way, it needs to go back that way. So that tells me that I need to cut 
the 330 seconds off of this side to get this lined up in the center. Now, uh, I'm going to go off camera and uh, go around to the shop and put these in the chop saw and cut them off just a little bit. I'm going to probably make two or three cuts just to you know, barely skim the edge of that and sneak up on it and check it with calipers to make sure that I get that, uh, that dimension or as close to it as I possibly can. And then when I get that done, we'll come back and I'll show you how uh, I uh, line up this plate here to get it not only centered this way, but to get it centered this way. So, cut those off and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back from getting my pieces trimmed off. You can see I took everything uh, off of this one side, the one with the Acme nut, and same thing on this one here. What I did do is I made a test piece and, you know, cut a little bit off, come around here and check it, go back, cut a little more off. Finally got the test piece set up right and then was able to set up a stop block to cut these others uh, the right length. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did have to take the uh, Acme nut off to get it out of the way so I could set it flat on the miter saw. You can also do this with a... Uh, you know, you could use your table saw if you've got a nice uh, table saw sled or maybe a miter gauge or something. Uh, you know, you're just barely taking a little bit off. Um, and I do want to say, too, for those of you guys who may have a little, uh, have a little mishap and, and maybe cut this too short or something where now you've got a big wobbly gap in there, it's not the end of the world. You can always shim it. In fact, on the machine, uh, just out of camera shot here, uh, the big green one over here, this piece, I used to make them a lot shorter, and I was going by my drawings uh, when I did it the first time, and then I found out that they always ended up being too short. So when I built that one, I ended up actually having to cut a little piece as a shim. It's no big deal, it still works. Uh, the main thing is getting it centered and concentric with your stepper motor hole. So now what I did is I changed the drawing where I actually made these longer so that now it's a whole lot easier to have to cut a little bit off than to try to cut a shim. So, so I've got that on there and again as I hold this up here I can tell that that hole is pretty well centered this way now. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, a way to make sure you get this all lined up before you actually fasten this in. And probably what I'm going to do is fasten the bottom piece on uh, and go ahead and get that screwed on so that these two will stay moving together. And then we'll fasten the, the top one off after we get it lined up. So let me get set up for that and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I've tried to rotate the uh, table around here, try to get in here tight where you can see things. Uh, and just so I can explain here, what I've done is I've taken one of the uh, Acme lead screws that I get from McMaster. I haven't even bothered to cut it off. It's six foot long. You probably can't see it down there, but it's, it's already, you know, I've got the bearing pressed in. It's already running through that bearing. And of course, since it's extra long, I've got about a foot or so hanging off the, the bearing. But just to help line this up, it doesn't matter. What you see here is I've taken a spacer block, I've taken one of the stepper motors, I've attached one of the couplings um, from dumpster CNC, I've screwed that into the end of this lead screw, and then what I did is, and you want to, when you mount this motor, you want to go ahead and mount it like you're, like you mean it, you know, put all four screws in, if you just put one in opposite corners or something, it can still tilt a little bit or whatever. So go ahead and put all four screws in, tighten this down just like it would. And then I ran this uh, uh, board and it, you know, it looks like it's all attached here, but if I move this, you can see that I don't have this fastened yet. It's just lightly in there so that I can um, get it lined up. And again, you can see if I had put this flush, uh, I would have been off because uh, it looks like there's probably, I don't know, 330 seconds, maybe even an eighth of an inch there. But the lead screw is laying nice and parallel across the top of the gantry here. It's fastened securely here. So now I can, I've got a couple of screws right here, and I just want to make sure that I've got this uh, 
where I'm hitting the center of this. Let's see if I can figure out how to raise the hole. Yeah, that should hit it. And let me just run one screw in on this side. Excuse me as I cut in front of the camera here. And I'm going to run one in on this side. And then, I did use the, uh, I have a knob on the end of this motor so I can see that real easy that turns. So, I know that I've now not only got this Acme nut in line this way, but by going ahead and setting it on the, the lead screw and fastening everything up temporarily and just kind of letting this fall where it needs to go, I can see that it, it's going to turn very nice. Nice and smooth. There's no binding at all on it. So there you have it. Uh, and now I can go ahead and put the other two screws in uh, on the back and the front. But that is probably one of the best ways to get it lined up. Uh, you know, of course, now I'll just, uh, in fact, now that I've already got this fastened here, I can actually mark my lead screw on the back side of that bearing, and I know exactly how much I need to cut off for the, for the X axis. Uh, like I said, this is really the only one that's kind of tricky because getting all these pieces together and get everything lined up because it is plywood, you know, if it was machine steel or something, you could get it to where everything just bolted together and it would be perfect. But when you're dealing with plywood uh, and spacing it with washers and that kind of thing, and again, the washers I buy, you know, if you buy a bag of washers from McMaster Car, more than likely they're all gonna be pretty much the same thickness. But if I wait another week and buy another bag of washers, they may be a different thickness. Even in the, the McMaster thing, you know, it tells the tolerance, you know, you may get them this thick or you may get them this thick. So, uh, you know, that makes a difference too. So certain parts of this machine, particularly this part, pretty much needs to be custom fit. And I didn't mention it earlier, but what I did is, and of course I can't show you now because I've got the, the lead screen in the way. I guess I kind of can. What I did is when I was putting in this bottom support, I wanted to make sure that I had both of these flush. So I just used this scrap piece of wood that's this you know, uniform thickness, butted them up against there and used a clamp and then I just put the screws in the bottom here. So now this uh, whole Z-axis assembly is pretty much uh, assembled and in the next video I'll mount the uh, Z-axis box and show you how to dial that in. Okay guys, that's going to do it for this video. It's already going to be probably a 12-15 minute video. I'll try to cut out what, uh, what I can to shorten it up. But I just wanted to go into a little bit of detail on showing you how to get this lined up because this will make everything else a whole lot easier if you get this where it really moves nice and free, no binding or anything like that. So that's going to do it. Uh, I, <laughs> I cut the fan off to try to get rid of some of that ambient noise and now they're mowing grass over here in the ball field beside me so can't win so anyway uh that's going to do it for this video i appreciate all my new subscribers if you like this video please hit the thumbs up down below and if you haven't subscribed already uh please do and uh follow along on our build videos here uh I'll probably have one or two more videos on this one uh i'll put the z box on and get it all uh, dialed in and then the, probably maybe one last video to put the lead screws and the stepper motors all and then we'll be ready to fire this thing up and do some test cuts. So, and then you'll be seeing lots of videos probably with this thing running. So, anyway, that's going to do it. Uh, again, appreciate uh, y'all hanging around and if you haven't already got your GAT CNC kit, uh, you can check this website right over here and uh, go to it. I also have a link down in the description uh, where you can go pick one up. So. Anyway, that's it. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you later.